one of the one of the things I, I, I guess what I would say to split in the sky is one word. Yup. Um, what I really like about that speech and that presentation, because I'm trying, along with you, to figure out a way to reach these people uh, who really are the people that we have to meet and who we have to reach. Uh, what's really nice about uh, the native voice and the First Nation voice, and unfortunately being the First Nation, they were in line for the first violation, and we haven't corrected that. So the process in these type of informational revolutions or other types of revolutions is how to get it to work amongst the majority of us. Um, we all know that the splitting the sky didn't say one incorrect word. Um, that would shock most of the people in the cars going by right now because they don't want to think about that. And the process that we have going for us right now that an awful lot of protest groups and protest people did not have years ago is we have this wonderful link up with information that gets deposited into our little homes and our dens and our little wherever coffee shops wherever we want to go to the internet and kind of that's where where in the early uh, 2002, 3, 4, I was down in Reno, Nevada, and we got together to protest the war again, and I noticed the big difference was that we were doing the same old thing of the 60s and the 70s out in the street protesting and showing people our dissatisfaction. And one of the underreported stories, and this is in Reno, Nevada, which is, which is the northern part, which is a real cowboy country, really cowboy country, yet when we were in the street, the absolute worst response we ever got was two positives to one negative, and that was for three days after we invaded. Before that, we always got ten to one, and when we were setting up outside of the recruiting stations, the people would go by and we would get 50 positive honks to one negative. So they trumped up the entire, the entire set of polls saying the country is behind this. The country was not behind that. So they can modify and adjust whatever they want. And really, Wayne can speak much more eloquently, as he often does, about being our own media. Because for us to get to any sense of justice anywhere, and we need as white people, and I am as white as this canvas above me, okay, we need to get back and understand that yes, Soros is this generation's, but who was before that, before that, before that? And you know what? It's the white guys who came over on the boats. And so we can do talk and do all we want about this truth and thermate and bombs and whatever, you know, no rad and airplane. We can talk about all of these things, and all you have to do is move them back a half a century, and now all of a sudden you've got another huge violation pulled off by white, Whitey. Then you put, move it back another 50 years and there's another whole round of violations. And even when you get back to the, to the invasion that we did on this country um, uh, about Native America, okay, uh, you can move that back 50 or 100 years and you can see the same lineage of people doing the exact same thing. So when we are talking about truth, um, I like the concept of truth seeking because I'm not so presumptuous as to know it yet, and I think it can always unfold. And also, keeping this pretty short, it's very interesting that 9-11 somehow has ended up being the central waypoint, a crisscross point for so many things that we all feel in our own way are wrong. 
it's because it was such a human violation and it was so obvious it's like wait a minute and I remember watching um, a news report on those days early days and there's this white guy who was on Manhattan and he said a profound thing which sticks in my mind he was being interviewed and what do you think and he said man we gotta learn to get along and that's the story okay there are people who don't want to get along there are people who want to maintain and sustain their control we know this we now have centuries of this information activists know this I've learned so very little since 2002 2003 about why we went into Iraq why we did all of these things I really haven't learned very much because most of the people who are in these movements have good information where did it go how come these guys don't know it's an easy answer and that is because garbage in garbage out right back to Wayne being our own media being on our, our own educators and so 9-11 ends up this nexus, this point where all of these people, all of a sudden, they're so outraged, they, they're going to now all of a sudden speak up about chemtrails, they're going to speak up about, about whatever, they're going to throw in these candidates, that candidates, they're going to talk about all of these things that have kind of been bugging them for a long time. And being somewhat of an activist of the 60s, and I had a chance to meet Mr. Kunstler and know a person who's still working consular foundation for you um, and I had a chance to meet Floyd Red Crow Westerman and when I was in the comedy business we brought Charlie Hill over a Native American comic who was a great political satirist and would set up benefit tables for Leonard Peltier and I just met Johnny down in down in uh, right in, in my town next door down there who was his defense lawyer couple of beers so the point is there's a lot of information out here there's a lot of history I love the fact that we right now us white guys are reaching back and we're being told a story this is where the violation started on this continent so how do we reach these people and this is where and I'm very famous for this I protest protests because protests think they have got it all right and if that were the case why would we be here because things would have been fixed so there's a history of what worked and there's a history of what failed in people's existence on this earth who want to correct something and really that's what what was the thing that that gave birth to civil informationing because I was there in the civil disobedience times I've been arrested I took a huge civil disobedience act when I went on a strike against the United States government okay for a 32 hour work week for air traffic controllers because trust me you want that <laughs> okay you don't want me there in the four, fifth day and you sure don't want me there in the sixth day we know this this is just part of the truth so what went wrong with the activities that were being talked about and complained about what went wrong what went wrong is the message delivery in my opinion was wrong the message delivery still is wrong We'll talk a little bit more about it when we're drying inside up there about civil informationing. Um, so here we have 9-11 right in the middle of it all. Everybody's hooked their little string onto 9-11. If we don't honor the process of 9-11 and keep it intact and we serve as a collective to destroy it 
because there are too many fringe things that glom on to it and we suck the nutrient out of that, we're going to lose a great opportunity because unfortunately for them, 9-11 is a very bright light bulb for all of us. So since some won't make it up there, this is what I do want to say. The protest that I have against the 9-11 protests is that the people who are engaged in glomming on their particular angle, we are changed, the Ron Paul program, chemtrails, this, that, whatever it might be, I think you have a responsibility to honor your host. If you blur the line and all of a sudden line 11 is just chemtrails or it's just Ron Paul or it's just Dennis Kucinichers, just one thing, you will kill that organism. So when you are involved, please take some time. Take whatever element that you want to create and move forward and talk about and enlighten people about and make sure it doesn't kill the host. If it's a good point, it'll stand on its own. And if it's not a good point, it won't. This is where COINTELPRO was fully engaged in the 60s and the 70s and every other progressive and interesting movement from that time because they know exactly what to do. They deliberately throw associations in to the host environment and all silent but without any question pre-designed hell breaks loose. We can beat that and we beat that with information. We beat that with seeking the truth. And we beat that by saying, wait a minute, if what I'm talking about is strong enough, it can stand on its own. I don't have to bring down, hang on to, be dragged along by any other thing. And since again, some people won't make it up there later, this is what I will say. Black and white is anarchy. You can play the anarchy game with these people not going to get very far. You can play the guns and street and cops and robbers games with the guys who have the military, they have the cops, they have the jails, they have the media, they have everything else. You can play that game all you want. You are not going to go far. Because modern protest was born in the 60s and 70s and that methodology is now outdated. So we can do better. We need to do better. This We have to make a change. Wayne has asked me to talk a little bit more specifically about the sign, and I want to go right back to the message that, is, that I've known for a, quite a long time, and it's been affirmed about the higher levels of the peace community, and that is that they're compromised. And, uh, but not all people of peace are compromised. In fact, very few are. But they've been instructed to stay away from us. And I notice pretty clearly here I believe every single person here will want peace on earth. Okay, that's what I think. But I don't see the peace symbols. So what I do about my sign, and the reason that I commingle these two things, and if I'm going to be known for any website or anything down the road, it's going to be 9-11 Truth for Peace. That's my angle, but damned if I'm going to let peace destroy 9-11. This is a, me a style of messaging where it just kind of enters the person's brain and it makes a connection without having to do too much explanation. This is a methodology and a way to actually reach out to people and to communicate your point. It also works the way that we have to work, which is it works from the grass level upward. This sign works with these people and they get it. They get the peace part. They don't quite get 9-11 except for in their hearts they know it ain't right. But we have to cultivate that in them. Waste the time to go to Washington DC or Ottawa for the existing criminals that we've elected. It's a waste of time. It's not a waste of time to educate the people to get them plugged in, get them into our rabbit hole, start them on the journey to enlightening themselves because I'll tell you this, I completely believe that every person is basically inherently a good human being and will make a good decision and will treat their neighbor well. 
who have just been cornered into not doing so by the same narrow number of people at the top who came and invaded this country and invaded every damn country in, the, on, in Europe and every place else. So we'll talk maybe more a little bit about later. It has contraptions and rigs and messaging that I can change on this depending on where I go. But the real message right here is 9-11 truth for peace. So you can wear your black. You can say the Ugh! And these people are going to drive right by. But if every single sign here and every single shirt here had a peace sign on it, we would be hearing toot, toot, beep, beep, windows had rolled down, fingers had go out like this. It happens to me each and every day. I average between 100 and 200 peace signs, thumbs up, beep, beep. Thank you very much for being here for every fuck you and every negative thing that I get. 100 to 201 positives. I'm protesting your blackness. Change your shirts. Change your message into love, acceptance, acceptance peaceful world. That's why my sign's not black. That's why my shirt's not black. We've already learned some ways to fail. We're very bright. Let's figure out ways to succeed.